Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Jeez. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Hell allowed. I don't hear no music. Man, I'm crazy. Right there. Okay. What's up, Jack? How are you saying to me from the chicken? Oh, is that a simple Jason? Goddamn. No, hell, the rev. Hey, yeah, you uh, sent me a beer. Where's the Berman? Hello, simple Jason. You seen Dawn and Duke? Very simple. You're looking at yes. him, baby. Oh, I see Duke. It's Help me! Ass, Michael, don't leave from? me here! Babe, um, oh, one of the gave it to me. It's like a special modded item and only I can get it. Sorry, bro. Sucks That's to okay. Mate, it's, it's, on zombies. To Duke. it's on zombies. They're dropping this shit now. Oh, Shut the hell up, Duke. Yo, yeah, dude, you wanna give me something, hard. bro? Come on, dude, I'm poor. Help a brother out. Motherfucker, who's insane? Who's that for charity? Please, please. Where the hell are you, Duke? Where are you at, baby? Right here. How you wanna go? You wanna go, Duke? Huh? Oh man, look man, at man, this I'm check phone. Look at this. I just stole like thirty of those pumpkins. Everybody, shut the fuck up! <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Okay, up, we can bro? do Duke, this. I need, I need you Michael. soon. I need to talk with you soon. I need water, please. I need water. Is that new blood? I need water, I'm full. Please. I'm like fucking spider over here. Shut the hell up, please. Hey! Hey, Duke. Hey, Duke. He's simple. He's real simple. I'm scared already. You heard this? Just go for it. Woo! Yeah. Oh my God. Don't get him tired. You got this. I'm gonna get absolutely plastered here. I heard the last year the guy who went first died. A year later. Oh, let me go first then. Exactly. Right. Oh, oh, shit. Holy oh, shit. Oh, I can't play it back again. Oh, oh he's with the Jew guy. Eight times in a row. I know you like the pretzels, but not everybody else has to know. Yeah, no one else wants to smell your smelly smarts. Wait, who got that reef? Farts. That's the reef weapon. Oh, sorry. Bonk. 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 What? God, yes, I love your burgers. I want to shit my brains out. What? I'm, I'm trapped. Get me out. Oh, I fucking love burritos. Give me one. Burritos are good, dude. Oh my god, I'm gonna eat like three of these, man. We have burritos. You guys are disrespectful as fuck. Where's the alcohol? You're, you're not that quiet, guys.
Shoo. This is gonna be so sick. Oh, that was really that good. Thank to be you. Level. That was a great oh, story. Thank you for sharing. Is, uh, I love it. Your yes. And thank you for everyone for being so respectful. Everyone did such a great job of listening. That's really nice. Simple Jason loves that. All right. Let's keep this party going, guys. Our... Yeah, everyone get a bite to eat, have a little drink just real quick, real nice, and then our next storyteller is going to come up. They're going to tell great stories. Is the, is the Dr. Grog here? Is Dr. Grog around to, to, to tell the stories? Yes, yeah, Dr. Grog, you're going to be up next, so if you want to take your take the center here, then everyone's going to be real respectful while we tell your story. It's going to be real nice. Yeah, yeah. Let's take go, Dr. Grog. Uh, yeah, there you go. Let's go. Do you have any alcohol? Oh, nuts. I'm a recovering alcoholic. You got anything less alcoholic? <laughs> I need more alcohol. Imagine being recovering when you can be an alcoholic for life. Oh, it's lamb. Oh, that's really nice. Oh, that's the lamb. Like better RuneScape. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is RuneScape. Don't get me tempted. Is that a book time story? All right, time for story. This is 
Fucking sick. This is going so well. Croc is, is all you're gonna do to us is We're at Sender on something at seeding Monday and a part of Sue. In the heart of the deepest and most remote forest, where you. Oh no! We're losing you, Doctor Croc. I think your uh, voice box broke there. Give him a minute. Doctor Croc. Croc. Are you good? Oh, he's broken. Oh. Gather close, dear camp, my companions, or I shall recount to you a tale of cosmic horror that centers on something as seeming mundane as a pot of soup. In the heart of the deepest and most remote forest, where few dare to tread, there was an enigmatic old cabin, its very existence whispered of in hushed tones. This place has power. Near. This cabin, they said, was unlike another, possessing an aura of ancient malevolence that defied reason and sanity. Inside, an equal sinister aroma lingered, the source of which was a large, tarnished pot. The locals, in their ominous folklore, referred to it as the Cauldron of Madness. It was said that this cauldron bore inscriptions and symbols etched in a forgotten, hell-rich language, unknown to all but the most daring scholars of the occult. Those who managed to decipher a few words shuddered at the dark implication. The text hinted at an unfold communion with other world entities. The cabin and its cauldron were avoided at all costs, except for one fateful evening when a weary traveler lost his way in the woods and stumbled upon this cursed place. Starving and freezing, he could not resist the alluring scent that beckoned from the darkened interior. In the flickering light of the fireplace, the traveler approached the cauldron. As he peered inside, a thick, bubbling broth greeted his senses. It bulbed with an ear, came to phosphorescent light, and the stars seemed to reflect in its depths. He dared to taste the soup, and its flavor was unlike anything he had ever experienced. It was simultaneously heaven and wretched, an otherworldly delight that overwhelmed his senses. As he indulged further, he began to hear whispers, faint at first, but growing ever more insistent. They echoed from the very wall of the cabin and crawled through his mind, planting seeds of madness. The traveler's thoughts warped and twisted, and his vision blurred as the very fabric of reality seemed to unravel around him. Outside the <coughs> cabin, the forest itself began to change, and the stars above seemed to shift in the night sky, forming grotesque constellations unknown to mankind. The trees grew twisted, their branches resembling elritch tentacles reaching out to ensnare the unwear. Shadow danced in ear unison to a perverse symphony. The traveler realized that he had been lured into a nightmare from which he could not escape. The cauldron, the soup, and the cabin itself were conduits to other realms, realms filled with beings that should never be witnessed by human eyes. The traveler's consciousness was forever lost in that nightmarish void and his body became an eternal vessel for the hell-rich forces that had ensnared him. And so, the cabin and its cauldron of madness remain, a cursed monument to forbidden knowledge and the consequences of tempting the unknown. A warning, dear companions, to never underestimate the horror that can hide in the most innocuous of things, for the soup that tantalizes the senses may lead to the abyss of madness beyond which there is no return. That's fucked up, not gonna lie. What the hell, man? Woo! Okay, what Dr. Grog, let's give him some fucking applause for Dr. Grog. 
you stand it in the woods all the time. It's very nice. That lamp's something Great job, Dr. Greg. Thank you. Lamp. That was a nice oh, story. That was fucked up, man. That was a really, really good story. I was pretty scared. I don't know about you guys, but I got kind of scared there for a second. It's real nice. Dude, I shit myself. I like it, that. I like it. Oh, no wonder it started smelling. Well, all right, guys. Everyone just, you know, have a sip of your drinks. Maybe have a bite of a burrito or something. Because up next, you know, everyone knows him. You all love him. And if you're lucky enough to smoke crack with him, you absolutely should take that opportunity. The one and only Mar. Finally. Ooh. All right, motherfuckers. I'm gonna get very serious with you right now. Death the it's aliens. It's not about aliens, okay? Does anybody know the name of that lake down? No. Mar Martin. Oh, what is the name? What's the name of the lake? Mar Martin. Martin Lake, that's right. Listen up, motherfucker. This story takes place in Camden County in the 1980s. Little Johnny liked to walk around Martin Lake looking for bugs, poking the ground. As many of you know, Martin Lake is not shaped circular like many lakes. It has little avenues. Johnny's not supposed to be walking around Martin Lake because recent activities have shown that gangs, local gangs, drop their bodies there. But Johnny liked looking for his bugs, so he was out one day, poking the ground, and he found a little little beetle, and he scooped it up in a jar. And as he's looking at it, he can see through the jar something's off. Across from him, he can see a circle of vultures standing around. It immediately gained Johnny's attention more than his bug. He threw rocks at the vultures until they flew away, and he noticed something. Something pale, almost like a pig, but he knew it wasn't a pig. Why would a pig be across there? As he got a better look, he could tell it was a body. He immediately gathered his things and ran into Ingalls, screaming for help. By that evening, the place was swarming with police. Usually in these situations, the police will break ranks and talk to the locals and tell them what's happening. But this time, it was different. They were in a tight circle so no one could see anything and telling everyone to leave. And eventually, everyone did. The next day, the locals came to the scene. There was nothing there but the sight of the vultures. The, all the tire tracks were gone. It was almost as if everything was deleted. They checked the news, but nothing was ever published. They were curious as to why the police were so secretive when normally they weren't. Rumors began spreading that it was a fisherman that had drank himself into drowning. But if it was a local fisherman, why were the police so adamant being secretive? Also during this time period, Camden County was the home of the most frequent UFO sightings in history. Eventually, People stopped asking questions. Six years later, in 1986, a local government employee could not hold the secrets any longer. They finally leaked information about an autopsy of the man the police had found. It was no fisherman, and he had no ties to the area or gang activity. On the same day Johnny had found the body, an air traffic controller had reported sightings of a mysterious object. Dozens and dozens of reports had come in in the surrounding counties about similar things. Military personnel and government officials. This was like a really big deal. Here is what the public learned from the leaked photos. Back in 1980, when little Johnny discovered the body, he initially said, there were no injuries on it that he could tell, but the autopsy showed otherwise. The body had four circular, one to one and a half inch holes in four distinct locations around the body, drilled surgically, two in his upper chest and one above his belly button and one in his pelvic region. 
These holes were not crudely done. They were precise and surgical. Most of his blood had been drained, and all of his organs were missing, almost as if everything was sucked out of these holes. He also had pieces of his face completely removed, almost like laser cuts. And one eyeball had been missing. All of this came to light when these documents were leaked. And there was something that had you not looked very closely to the autopsy, you wouldn't have noticed. And it had to do with this man's vagus nerve. Your vagus nerve controls part of your automatic nervous system, like heart rate and digestion. So when your body is in great distress, your vagus nerve can shut off those automatic functions. The autopsy had revealed that this man's vagus nerve had gone absolutely wild right at the moment of his death, almost as if he was awake and alive during all of these holes and removal of his face. It's complicated, but it suggests this man was alive and he felt every bit of it until his body practically killed itself by shutting down his heart. He could feel the pain of his organs being sucked out. It must have been so excruciating. He literally died to avoid feeling the pain that his body was feeling. So I'm sure you're wondering, how does this autopsy report and the dead man relate to the alien UFO sightings? At the same time, farmers had begun reporting that their cattle had been dying in vast numbers, also with holes drilled in their body and parts of their face removed. Perhaps all of these UFO sightings and the fatalities of these animals are correlated in some way. We'll never know, because as everyone knows, shortly after, the zombies came. Damn. Oh. oh. Okay. Damn. Oh. Okay. Nice. Wow. Ooh. I'm quaking in my boots. Oh. Yes, I'm not sure about the alien parts, but the rest of it's been. <laughs> yeah, oh, God. Bonk. Hmm. Sorry, sorry, I lied. It was about aliens. Hey. It's always about the fucking aliens. Well, the aliens are real, goddammit! Woo! A lot of fucking people. Um, my voice is kind of bad, so I'm just gonna type it. My bad, guys. You got it, bro. Type. Oh, you got a sexy voice. No, nah, speak your <laughs> You're hot.
This story brought to you by a bored man at work on break. Woo! Woo! I'm a bored man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gang, gang. Wait, you're a man? Yeah. It's very good. It's a man, baby. Okay. Interesting. Woo! Woohoo! Whoa. Oh shit. <laughs> yes, yes, hello everybody. I'm so glad for all of you to come out tonight. Lovely scary stories, all of you. But I hope you're something for I hope you're ready for something truly bone chilling. But don't Yeah. Gulp. Have you ever heard the tale of the man with the smelly finger? It's not one person to tell you. It was a night, almost like any other night. A man by the name of Clyde Finkerbottom exactly began his preparations for the deep slumber. Setting his alarm to 11.47 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, he proceeded to say aloud, I am very tired, and I must sleep now. The man leaped from the floor into his bed and tucked himself in in his favorite blanket. Cozy comfy. The man suddenly smelled a stench. This is a stench that smells quite funny, the man thought to himself. Suddenly, he heard two tap tapping at the door. Perplexed, Kyle Pinkleton raced to the door at very fast speeds. This is so good. Ear this is so good. Door. Behind the wood that separates his walls, he could hear deep breathing, they grew heavy. Much like the smell that filled his nostrils. Another tip-tap-tap plagued the door. Carl Pumpernickel gulped and gripped the door, flinging it open. Before him stood a long and lanky man with terrible style. Hello, replied the confused homeowner. The crooked man held out his hand with an open palm and an ear grin. Connor Pompadours recognized his gesture as a greeting of sorts. Traditionally, it was known as a handshake where two individuals exchange hand warmth in a vertical motion. He knew he must accept the offer and reached out for the strange man's hand. As Corey Pompson's appendage grew near, he noticed something odd. The stench he had smelled seemed to originate from the very hand he was meant to shake. Then he saw it. Calvin Peabody screamed at the sight of the stranger's wretched index finger. Moments before making contact, he managed to retract his hand with haste. Your odorous finger is something to be appalled, said Cabo Paxton. Please wash it before disturbing my slumber once more. He commanded. The stranger simply looked at his putrid hand and walked off silently. It's unknown if the unknown fellow washed his diabolical finger after that day. But Cox and Patterswell would now have to live with the memory of the man with the smelly finger. Okay, that was a really good story, guys. Really good job, oh, Mr. Neil Mancer. Holy shit. Everyone. I'm so terrified right now. Oh my god. Well, thank you. That was awesome. Yeah, really I need to change your pants. Job. Yo, I need to change your pants. I hope you all enjoyed it. Now, let's hear some more scary stories. All yeah, right. Okay. My girls. Who's our next uh, scary storyteller here? We got uh, Dustler. 
did, did, did you read it? What the fuck me? you mean who is? Tuss or goddammit? Alright, everyone, get ready because I will tell some crazy ass thing. Everyone ready for that? I think Jason ran the show though. May I? Well, I think uh, we had a. Are you, did you sign up? Did you sign up first? Right. Make, yeah, yeah, make it quick. Make it Make it quick. <laughs> Alright, I'll make it quick. It will be real quick. Alright. <laughs> Be, res be respectful. Be respectful Once now. Be respectful now. It's okay. Right. Don't worry about it. Just regular gunshots. Once upon a time, an old Ooh, found shot. a big tool in the woods. She was starving. She ran to home and put the tool in the stew. And that's the best meal in weeks since the apocalypse started. Around midnight, the tool read a large and narrow open comes to claim it's too. She hears the stomping sounds of heavy footsteps in her garden and the voice of the moaning creature saying, Harry Toes, Harry Toes, I want Harry Toes. The voice gets louder and louder. Finally, she sees a massive creature in her doorway. Terrified, she shouts out, I hate your airy too. Now fuck off. The giant come into the room and say, "I know you did, and I will, and you will pay for that." No one saw the old woman ever again, and part of the footprint with a missing big toe in her garden. There was no clue of her disappearance. The end. All right. Yeah, dude, amazing, right. Man, amazing. all right, yeah. nice story. Great. Appreciate nice. that. Good job. Nice story. All right, all right. Story, we got another storyteller coming up, everybody. It's going to be uh, Mr. Art. Artie is going to tell us a really nice story. It's going to be real scary. Ooh. Ooh. We are, uh, we're getting closer to the end of the storytelling. There's a couple more storytellers after that. And then, uh, you know, you know. Pretzels. Yeah, food. There'll be lots of food to all eat right. and beer. Let me uh, let me uh, channel this real quick. And and if Everybody you don't grab a glow stick. The fucking pretzels could take it. You guys are monsters. I need some pretzels, goddammit. Oh my god. Oh look, piece of candy. Oh piece of candy. Oh piece of candy. Oh piece of candy. Ooh. Oh piece of candy. Ooh. Ooh, piece of candy. One pretzel. God damn it, come on. Yo, can I get some inside of pretzels? Need some uh, pretzels. Uh, those. All right, we we ready? We ready? All, All right, guys, down, let's do down. it. Yeah, we're gonna go here. All right. This is a uh, 1892, a haunting voyage. It's about a married couple from Europe, Jason and Mary, standing in their cozy living room, packing their bags. They're getting ready for a business trip to New York. Mary has a phobia of water, but she insisted when Jason's work had potential expansion in New York that she stay by his trip for this, uh, stay by his side for this trip, sorry. <laughs> She's not so much afraid of the water below a ship, but more so just swimming in it. Jason reassures her, taking her hand, that everything will be fine on this ship across the, uh, Atlantic. Jason says... Don't worry, Mary. Captain Avery is known for his expertise, and he's a bit of a character, but he means well. Besides, you won't be in the water. We'll be floating on top of it. Jason and Mary arrive at the port. They board the ship, greeted by the ship's captain, Captain Avery. Captain Avery, grinning, says, Welcome aboard, folks. We set sail just as the sun kisses the horizon. I navigate best by the stars. The sea will rock you to sleep in no time. The couple notices Captain Avery has a stiff leg, almost like it's made of wood. Mary hears a loud hiss of steam and holds Jason close. Captain Avery says, All is well, lass. Just a final check of the boiler. Sounds like she's ready to sail. <laughs> Mary exchanges an uneasy glance with Jason, but he reassures her. It's all right, Mary. Captain Avery knows what he's doing. They find their room and drop off their luggage. They head back to the main deck as they watch the ship sail away. 
As the sun kisses the horizon, they feel a chill creeping in. A thick fog rolls towards the ship and envelops them. Though the fog they see, uh, or through the fog, they see silhouettes of the sailors throwing the marlin ropes off the chocks and cleats of the please, ship. Please calm down. And Mary shudders as she hears the ship's bells ringing ominously through the fog. Shut the fuck up! Mary says, What's happening, Jason? This fog is unsettling. Suddenly, the ship's structure creaks and groans, and strange phenomena begin to occur. You hear the propeller churning the water as they can vaguely tell the wood of the pier dissipate through the fog. They quickly head to their room and notice a slight eerie look from other passengers as they greet them through the passageway. This doesn't seem right, Mary. Uh, maybe we just need a drink, get our sea legs. They quickly head back to their cabin. Mary takes a shower before settling down for the night, happy to have warm water to help with the cold of the ship. <coughs> she notices that the room begins to dim as the light through the porthole begins to fade. Mary looks away from the shower head toward the doorway and calls for Jason. Jason, can you get the light? Mary looks back at the shower head and notices the water changes color to a slight brownish color, almost like rust is in the water. The porthole. What the, the fuck light is happening here? Fades to black. Quiet. Mary Shh. urgently yelling, Jason, the light! The light from the shower head sputters like barely. <laughs> it's clogging, barely spewing out brownish water. She apparently jumps out of the shower. Strange noises coming from the pipes. Jason approaches with an oil lamp from the bedroom. The water clears up as if the warmth of the light cleared whatever was stuck in the pipe. Mary grabs uh, Jason and doesn't get back in the shower. She grabs a rag and wipes off the rusty water. Mary hurries into her nightgown as Jason tries to calm her down by lamplight. Mary and Jason have a few drinks to adjust. Time seems to pass rather quickly. The ship becomes increasingly unsettling as the darkness of night takes hold within the fog. Sailors and passengers transform into grotesque figures, unbeknownst to them. The ship's wood appears to age rapidly and horrifying events unfold. Their cabin door slings open with no one at the door. Jason stands fast. As he thinks someone is breaking in, he approaches the doorway and looks left and right through the passageway. Not a person in sight. Jason looks Jason at the damage. The knob and jam are broken. The door will not shut. Jason and Mary agree that something is wrong, that they can't just sit around. They take their oil lamp and walk the passageways. They notice a strange silence throughout the ship. Mary, nervously. Surely everyone didn't just go right to sleep. The carpet of the ship begins to feel damp. They smell the humid air and salt of the ocean. You think there's a storm? Maybe we didn't hear the bells. As they make way to the doors of the main deck, they find a hatch on the side of the ship left open, just allowing water splashing from the waves to make way into the ship. Jason bravely closes it as the wind rustles and holds it open. He slams it and dogs it closed. Jason and Mary walk away to the main deck. They approach the main deck, trying to call out to a sailor or anyone. Hello? Anyone? We need help. They barely tell that a figure is in the fog. Jason looks towards and calls out to them. Sir! We have an urgent matter. Order me not to sleep the rest of this voyage. Our door... The figure uh, approaches, and so do other shadows they barely make out in the moonlit fog. Sir! They take steps back into the hall, watching as they slowly approach. They hear slow, uh, several heavy footsteps approach and small creaking of wood. Almost hesitant to enter the ship, they slowly walk in. Jason and Mary keep backing away. Out of the fog, they make out a misshapen body with drenched clothes, hearing the sopping wet boots stepping on the soaked carpet. We have to get out of here, Jason! They make way down the passageway, unsure of what they just saw. More of these figures are now around the ship, terrified. They keep moving through the ship, finding somewhere to stay safe, noticing more and more water on the floor. It almost seems like anywhere they go that they are still followed, like they they just know where they are. There's one thing that helps their uh, escape from these weird creatures is how slow these creatures just move, almost like they have bodies made out of wood. They find their way on the mess deck. Strangely, they see no passengers still. The tile floor of the mess deck still appears rather dry. 
and provides slight relief to Mary and Jason. Suddenly, a door slams open and water just dribbles in. A figure walks in, almost like their leg was made out of a solid plank of wood, unable to bend. Jason remembers uh, that this solid wood leg. Captain Avery! The figure just stands there as the water continues to cover the rest of the floor, almost reaching Mary and Jason. Captain, is that you? The figure does not respond. Water finally reaches the couple, and as it just begins to touch Jason's shoe, the figure turns and looks right towards them. As the water fully surrounds the sole of his shoe, the figure starts walking toward them, almost like they use the water to see. Mary, we need to get somewhere dry. Hurriedly, they rush out of the compartment. They make way to the front of the ship, up a couple decks, avoiding these strange figures on their way and any damp flooring. Did you notice something, John? I think they use the water, Mary. These figures are littered throughout the ship, almost everywhere they go, all through, drifting through passageways like they're looking for something. They notice many unique details about them. Clearly, they look once human. Their skin looks strangely wrinkled and knotted like it's turning to driftwood. Several small sea creatures caught in their garbs and all drenched in water with no end. All night they spend traversing the ship, avoiding them, finding temporary safety, time passing uncomfortably fast. They continue to move and move. They've even come across the boiler room, which is all flooded, inoperable, running out of options, no one in sight. More of these figures appear, almost like the entire ship's passengers may have turned into them. The walls now begin to sweat, the ceiling begins to drip. At this point, there's nowhere to go. Mary and Jason tire. The floors almost feel like they're going to sink in the, in the whole ship, turning into a piece of driftwood itself. The wet and cold almost pierces their bones at this point. They notice a faint glow on the horizon outside the ship now feeling warmer by a few degrees. Fog seems a little dense now. They find the exterior of the ship more comforting than the inside that has become littered with unwanted passengers. With the rocking of the ship despite the splashing of water, they feel comforted by the light creeping up the horizon. Suddenly, several outside hatches and doors burst open and these creatures filter outside toward them. They find themselves back on the quarterdeck where they boarded the ship. Surrounded by these weird, wooden-like creatures, they seem to be moving even slower than before, like they're dying or drying in the sun. As they are completely surrounded, the sun has fully risen above the horizon. The fog around them thickens once again. They grab each other in panic, and then the fog blows by. Suddenly, as it clears up, it appears normal. The eerie happenings have ceased. Everything looks just as they had first boarded the ship. They look back at the dock to find that they never left. Man, that was good. That was awesome. That was sick. Yeah. That was sick. That was good. Woo. Yeah, you good yeah. guy. You good guy. Well, that was pretty. Grog have mission with Rick Grime. All right. In the heart of a desolate wilderness, a man found himself adrift, swallowed by the boundless expanse of the trees in silence. Days passed indistinguishable from one another as he traversed the unforgiving forest, searching for a way out. The sun offered no guidance, and the moonlight whispered only riddles. Once chilling, sorry, one chilling evening beneath a sky pierced by the jagged silhouettes of ancient trees, he stumbled upon a small clearing, 
There, a campfire's ember glow painted shadows upon the gnarled roots of the forest floor, revealing an old man. The wrinkles on his face told tales of forgotten years, and his hair, white as the hoary pines, whispered secrets of generations past. The old man, with eyes as deep as chasms and a voice like the wind in the pines, beckoned the lost soul. Sit with me, share this fire, a meager meal, and stay. <clears throat> Grateful for the momentary refuge from the haunting solitude, the man acquiesced to the old man's offer. He planted himself in the dirt by the fire, filthy and steaming. The old man reached into a withered, torn sack and pulled out two ripe red apples. Flicking his wrist, the old wood handle, <clears throat> old wood handed blade flew out like the practice of a thousand years, and he cut crisp slices of the apple, and he fed them to the man. They shared their meager meal, and as they conversed, it was as if they spoke of everything and nothing at all. <clears throat> the words flowed like a meandering stream, like the black river of the night running over and through them. As the night aged and the fire's embers smoldered, the lost man prepared to depart. It was clear that the old man was in no shape to travel and he would stay behind. The man said he would press on and send help. The old man only had one word, stay. The man brushed it off as nonsense. Just a foolish old man, he told himself, and he carried on through the woods. And it was then as he ventured out in the endless expanse that he realized how little he'd learned about the old man. Like how he became a prisoner of the unfathomable woods, or even his name. The forest concealed its secrets well, <clears throat> and their conversation had been a mere dance on the surface of an abyss. The man walked all day, his steps echoing through the unending expanse of the forest. The towering trees stretched their shadowy fingers towards the heavens, and the sun sank below the horizon, leaving the world bathed in eerie eerie twilight. As night fell over the woods and it grew darker, he stumbled across a small clearing. In the dim light, he saw the same forlorn scene before him. The flickering campfire cast its ghostly glow upon the gnarled roots, and there, like an unyielding specter, sat the old man. It was though as if time had folded upon itself, drawing him back to an inexplicable moment a cruel jest of the universe, a relentless loop from which there was no escape. The man demanded to know what was going on. How could this be? But the only man had one word to reply. Stay. The stars above, those indifferent witnesses to his plight, twinkled with a cruel knowingness. The forest with its siren, silent sentinel trees had condemned him to the ceaseless cycle. Each step that he took, every direction he ventured, brought him back to the same point of convergence. The campfire, the old man. Night after night, the cycle repeated. A macabre dance with no escape. The lost man's confusion turned to despair as he grasped at the uncanny details. The old man's eyes held the weight of ages, and his hands bore the scars of countless trials. After a while, the man lost count of how many nights he came across the old man, each time the man would feed him apples and tell him to stay, but each night the man would frantically tell him he must press on. One night, the man arrived at the same clearing, beneath the same starry canopy, but there was no man to be found. The fire crackled and popped, casting dancing shadows upon the ground, and the forest silence seemed to weigh heavy on his soul. Beside the flickering fire sat only a fresh sack of apples, ripe, tantalizing, and a knife thrust deep into the tree stump. It was as if someone had left these offerings behind with the intention of returning. A chilling realization took his breath away as he gazed at the untouched apples and the knife driven into the stump. The cold clutch of it stopped his heart with a cruel understanding. The weight of his arrogance bore down on him, a haunting truth that cast its shadow long over his soul. The old man, the haunting apparition of the forest, was not a wandering stranger, but it was himself, aged after countless years, trapped in this endless cycle. The forest's eternal night 
was his punishment for his own arrogance and folly. Years prior in the throes of his own hubris, he had wandered away from his camp, his apples, and his knife. He'd walked blindly into the forest's abyss and become ensnared in its darkness, a relentless cycle, a prisoner of his own making, doomed to wander the woods until the end of time. The old man tried to stop him. He tried to stop himself, to make him stay, to stop him from wandering into those woods' terrifying embrace each night. But his younger self had been too blind, too stubborn, to heed his warning. Now, in the stillness of the night, he understood his timeless mistake, that he was doomed to watch himself be forever lost in the woods. Brilliant, Bravo! Oh, oh, yes. oh, 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 my God! That was amazing. That was oh, my God! Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to my scary like, uh, story. That was really nice. It's a cool guy. All right, I think we got one oh, more man, story. Cool uh, one more story here to really cap off a nice storytelling time. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, uh, invite uh, Mal up here to, uh, to to cap us off with a nice story and uh, yeah. It's really nice. Hey, pretzels. Do you know this? Uh, or mayo? You got this, Mal. You got this. How was everyone's night? It's pretty good. Well, good, thank you, Mal. It's pretty spooky. That's good. I'm hoping for something more interactive. <laughs> oh? Those of you that are clearly attention deficit would like to pay attention now. My story, too, also begins in a forsaken forest. <clears throat> in the shadowed forest, beneath the pale light of a blood-red moon, a malevolent power stirs, an eerie wind whispers through the trees, carrying with it the chilling echoes of legends long forgotten. Gather round, dear souls, for the tale of the masked ones, those cursed souls who walk the line between the living and the dead. Long ago, so good. in a forsaken so village, there lived a wicked sorcerer who sought to harness the dark forces of the universe. He called upon the spirits of death, and in doing so, he bound himself to their wicked wills. He created masks, each one imbued with the essence of a different dark spirit, and bestowed upon his most loyal followers. These masked killers, the stuff of nightmares, were cursed to forever carry out their master's bidding, hunting the living for all eternity. Their evil deeds knew no bounds, their victims mere pawns in a relentless game of torment. <laughs> now, as you sit in this room, the spirits of the masked ones begin to waken again. They sense your presence your energy, and they crave release. You are not mere observers. You are participants in their dark ritual. The masks they wear are not just physical. They are metaphysical symbols of the curse that binds them. In your midst, there may be those who are unknowingly carrying the blood of a wicked sorcerer within them. A dark inheritance that must be acknowledged and cleansed. The only way to break the curse is to confront the malefic spirits and challenge their power. Close your eyes, everyone. For in your mind, you shall witness the awakening of these masked killers. 
feel their presence in the room. They're cold. out the hidden symbols of power, the relics of the source of all arts. Holy Only sh- by piecing together and confronting Lord. the baleful spirits can you hope to free yourself from their grasp. This is very important. Beware, for the path ahead is treacherous, and the masked ones will stop at nothing to protect their hearts. In the end, only your collective strength, courage, and determination can vanquish the evil that binds you. Now, dear participants, embark on this journey to break the curse, confront the spirits of the masked ones, and unveil the truth that set you free from their spiteful grasp. The ritual has begun, and fate lies in your hands. Recite the prayers in the correct order, as sure as day passes in the night. Okay, guys, you gotta recite the prayers. You gotta recite the prayers in the right order. What's the prayer? What's the prayer? I don't know. I don't know what the prayer is. This person is invisible. Gun him down. Oh my god. Yo, Mortimer. Oh, hey. How you doing? Mortimer, what the fuck's going on, man? We're looking for some protection. Surely the enemy is gonna find peace in my fucking gun. We got you surrounded. Peace in the world will never run out of you after this. We gotta find it. We gotta find it. Oh my god. It's not good. I don't know who did that, but really bad timing. I wanna go. <laughs> you okay, Becky? I'm scared. Neil, what the hell's going on? Fucking bitch. Someone's in this goddamn hotel. What the hell even is that? Come here. What's going on? What's going on in here? What the fuck's going on? Yo, there's a note back there. Bidal. Bidal, can you use that sledge? Huh? What do you mean? Can you use the sledge? There's a note back here. There's a hidden room in a cage. Oh. Just because I'm chicken man, does that mean I'm going to shoot my chicken friends? All right, guys, we got to find the notes and figure out what the order what is. Like? We got to find the these notes. Too, the notes I have... I uh, saw a floating axe. I saw a floating axe. I pissed and shitted, bro. I pissed and shitted. Away from the floating axe. I got diapers for you, Julie. The shirt. I want to cock the, 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 the floating axe. Jesus Christ. Where Your bullets are useless. All right, if we can find the notes no and recite shit. the prayer, we can banish the evil. Why is there people in the corner? Don't, 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 don't kill the axe. This is the death corner. Don't kill the axe. Like, don't kill the axe. Has anyone found any nerds? I lost track of him in the chaos. Man, I don't know how to get the hell out of here. Oh, shit. They lost the windows. <laughs> Hey guys, just gonna tell you there's really no way out of here. You gotta find the notes. Did someone say chocolate? Excuse me, I want to butcher. Michael, don't leave me here, Michael. Should we jump the window? We just gotta find the notes, and if we can recite the prayer in order, we can get out. We can get out if we find the, the prayers. It's a scavenger hunt. Find the prayers. We gotta find the prayers. It only works if everyone dies. My God. Oh. What? Right, I'm Why is there a lot of gas sacrifices? Oh, they're guys. empty, thank God. Everyone has to give one Rico weapon to Hoodoo Brown. Oh, You're a VIP, man. You guys stay safe. Thank God. Your life worth two more. Everyone upstairs. Has anyone found a book? She has gasoline in his head. 
<laughs> I can summon demons. I can summon demons. This is amazing. Oh, not me, not me, ghost. Me. I, I put it somewhere else. I'm not wearing a backpack, but I have another pocket. I got shame. Neo Mancer. Mr. Neo Mancer, we you have a you deal. Uh, you yeah. Yeah, look, Take a steak. Eat it. Has anybody found any nerds? Guys, we still have time to escape, guys. What up to is, this <laughs> is this a sigil? Oh, I is this a what the f what? Okay, uh, I've got a Anyone who tries to force their way from here on out, please. Alright, it's got a fucking sun! <laughs> we gotta find the notes, guys. If we can find the notes, Yo, get the prayers. Yo, someone broke this wall and found something. Okay, that's good. I think this is a pretty good setup, whoever did that. Oh god, the ghost is in here! Watch out, ghost is in here! <laughs> I have to try to make an opening to the window. Maybe we can escape to When that. life don't give you shit. Where's the meal? It's gonna be your blood soon. No! <laughs> God of here. Look for lockers. Look for lockers. Careful, Dex. Find it. Listen, 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 listen to ghosts. Fuck, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Fuck, he's dead. Uh, I mean, fuck. No, I lied. I lied. I'm not dead. Oh, I need a book. Shit. I need a book. Yeah, but you're about to be dead. I would have any oh! facts. Yo, and someone just got hit by a sight. Get in here. Open your door. Uh, I think they're being there and not that much. Clam, run. Clam, run. Guys, there's a guy following me. You okay? Are you hurt? No, I'm hurt, man. Ah, cut me. Someone bandaged me up. My boo boo. I threw. I gave you the bandages. I don't I want to be patched up by this lady. Jacob! Jacob! Damn, we're on the bro, second floor, Jacob! It's, it's like that video where the, she sucks the poison out, what? you know? Exactly. Oh, you tell us to go here? Get that I'm looking for the note, man. Let's just get the fuck out of here. Can't we just like, break a window or something? Oh, oh. oh. It's happening, it's going down. Okay, this is so oh, good. Oh, Malak. Hey, man. Can't go, I'm here. Get out of here. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please, fuck. I'll hold it. Can I get it back? gas can to burn the place down when we get out of here. Actually, guys, let's just burn this place down. I have a gas can. Anybody got a lighter? While we're still down. Make it burn! It's the death of 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 the death the death of 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 the the death There should be three. There should be three prayers. Don't kill the chicken. Don't kill the chicken. Well, this has been eventful. Okay, we got a lock locker over here. Okay, we need to get in that lock locker. We need a combination. I got a sledgehammer. We go. We can't get out. We need a combination. Yeah, try six six six. Okay, where where is the lock? Zero 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 one. Zero sixty nine. Hey, it's a oh, three it's digit square. combo. Right. Fucking... One you wanna, you wanna zero zero. Two zero zero. Just take it, it's heavy, I don't want it anymore. Yeah, three, 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 three. The downstairs oh, bar is go. safe. It's full. Dasha, you can't. Fucking liar. We need a plan. Downstairs bar. If you have the papers, take them to the downstairs bar where it's safe. Oh my god. Or keep Wait, them for yourself. Don't leave me here. Oh my god. Hello? Is anybody found a piece of paper with the number? 
The Someone safe is said on the they third did. floor. Where's the paper? Who had it? We need there's a probably paper with some three numbers it on it. Go start upstairs. With three numbers. Three numbers. <gasps> I bet it goes to the locked cabinet. <laughs> Hey guys. Hi, you remember me? I'm Sia. Uh, I remember you. It's good to see Yo, you. Yo guys. Alright, let's do this. I'm scared. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull you. Code for the combination hey girl. Did we try 666? Uh, I lost Jacob. No, that it's not 666. Hmm. Oh, I don't have a bandage, sorry. That's kind of fucked up. It's okay. Oh, they're just books. Have you found a pouch with the downstairs bar? I did come here for it. We just need the combination. We're looking for the combination. This hotel's getting a one star review. One star review. I don't find anything. Service sucks. I mean, everywhere. I talk like this, but you know, this is kind of my real voice, man. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be fucking rude. I'm gonna give these motherfuckers a real nasty review, man. Yeah, this place yeah. sucks. This place sucks. Okay. I'm gonna write City Hall about this place. I'm gonna get y'all shut down. Yeah, there's a code of the, the, the site on the sorry, the last floor. The code must be Thank in the last Asher. floor too. The code is Asher. in the last floor. Almost. Yeah. No. No. Turn up. Yep. Here. Oh, I don't oh my god, I found the code! This is crazy! What, the what is it? It's 125! 125! The door is open! The door is open! 125! 125! 125! 125! Watch out, watch out! The guy's coming! Get it quick, get it quick! Oh, words of light. Alright, you gotta read them in the right order! With words of light. Who ah! the paper? You need all three in order. Oh Put your gun down. Put your gun down right now. Take the paper to the bar. Take the paper to the bar. Papers to the bar. Get the papers to the bar. Hey guys, let's get the papers. Sorry, I'm sorry, chicken man. Is using a gun melee weapon. There's no point in using a fucking range weapon. Where's Dr. Grass? You got to look at this guy. Fucking slap each other, man. We got fucking range weapon. I rolled an 18 out of 20. I can kill the ghost. Got the melee. He's using gun. I need those papers. I need those papers at the bar. Get to the bar, Grog. Get to the bar. Just need to get out of here. Oh. Keep moving, Grog. Get to the bar. Fuckers, fucking just like a fucking ex. Let us out. Let us out. Fucking no. Send them to this location. Oh, God damn it, it's a fucking oh, helicopter. Hey, this is my god. Don't leave me here. Bro, right, after this, you gotta help me find one, dude. I'll pay you. We're gonna clear some shit. I'm gonna go with easy spot. Right, I'm Hal. Okay. My friend Hal's the fucking beast, dude. Shut up. Yeah, really? Alright, we're dropping the darn papers here. They're your papers, witch. What if we can't read? Uh, it's a call! The chopper's incoming! Check it out. What if I need a cold on a second? Ladies and gentlemen, it's got to be a part of it. Except the women. Get me out of here. Too many wieners in this mark pocket. Protect the ladies. Oh, I saw them. Can I help you, bro? Break down on the dance floor. Break down on the dance floor. There's two missing. 
We just need one more. We just need the one last line. Yeah, let's let's search. For the ghost holding the chicken. That's not the chicken. I start killing people. See who's got the pick roll. Didn't expect it. Me. Who's the man? 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 Uh, focus up, we just need to find one more torn piece very quick. Seven! 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 Chase him! Where'd he go? Where'd he go? I'm coming! <clears throat> we need one more code. Yeah. Let's go to the rooftop! What? this say check twenty dollars to spooky ghost <laughs> look if I need a if I need to go out there site is on the third floor still it is. Fine, I'll go get it. I know I have the key. I can open it right now. Fine, I'm gonna do it. Oh god! You almost killed me! Get out of my way, I'm gonna open the door. Need help. My legs are breaking. I need pain killers. There's a locked door on the first floor! <clears throat> Man, even the girls are fucking like fucking like <laughs> I'm all still out this shit No, there's a real ghost with an egg and a man. The ghost, hey Casper. No, Look on Casper. Someone take the notes. Are we still demons gonna... or not? We still gonna vote? Oh my god! Over here, see if this is an exit. Yes. You are freaking out, man. How the hell? Alright, guys. I heard the ghost speak to me. It said the code is on the first floor. First floor? Yeah, I heard so. Look for it after I check your wounds. I'm on the verge of dying. Oh fuck! <laughs> I think they're gonna start killing people. This is getting take crazy. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'll be your, I'll be your one of those aliens. Don't remember us in the part of it. Okay. So I got a little 
egg I on didn't my put face. I've had a piece of paper in my bag for like five, oh, ten no minutes. No fucking no. yeah. yeah. Oh my You're god. You're nice. Oh. My bad, guys. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna we're gonna bring we're gonna bring the papers together. I challenge you to fisticuffs after this. Out of character, make sure you go to the page out of character. Where are we putting them in here? So dumb. Bring the papers over to Simple Jason, please. Over here. Okay, hold on, I'm dropping it. There's the, there's the, there it is. Hey, Zama's name's not on the list. Uh, now what order do we read them? Okay, okay, Simple Jason. Simple Jason's gonna try and banish the spirits. My goal. Uh. Patakeg's rule. With words of light, I bid thee cease your plight. Evil spirits, shadows by invisible and star. You guys have to still vote. In purity's name, I break your chains. Evil spirits. That's up. I think that does it. He said the words. Did he say him in the right order? I'm pretty sure he did. We need to break it down. We need to break it down right now. Sounds like someone's breaking it. It's just a storm game. Sell down. What's happening right now? Do we need to do the shit out of this place? Oh my god, Who's what the hell? Oh, my bandage just go. It doesn't oh, matter. Not me. It definitely wasn't me, Rave. I wasn't holding it for 10 minutes without realizing it. I challenge you. Matt, I challenge you. Matt, I in purity's name, I break your change. Evil spirits depart, no more remains. With more of light, I break your change. Evil spirits shadowed wings by moon and star. Where's go? Moon and star. You do it. Down, Mac. Where the fuck is going? Please turn off the. No one's even in the game. Where's go? Where is go? I'm breaking it down. He's he's probably I think he's got on the guitar. Just Put the gun down. I think go. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for the gun because I think they want to go. Go down there. Would you shoot at me, bear? My God! Would you shoot at me? In purity's name, I break your. Nothing. I can't. No, that's not it. No. That's not. With words of light, I bid thee cease your plights. But you In purity's name, I break your chains. Chains, evil spirits, depart, no more remain. I think you almost had it right. You almost had it right. Excuse me, we're banishing you. I'm gonna keep doing this until it works. Hold up, hold up. Who's in charge here? With words of how do you speak to someone in charge? Who's in charge? I think I'm the manager, bitch. What I'm the manager. I'm the manager. No, 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 for real. Who's in charge? In purity's name, I break your chains, evil spirits. To oh my god, bro, why are you sound like that? Evil spirits shadow wane my mood and star be gone again. With the words of light, I bid thee cease your plight. Ooh, Redfish, blue fish. You fucking tell him, Grog. You tell him, Grog. Hey, hey guys. Fuck him up, Grog. I think the, uh... Oh, Good job, Grog. Nice, Grog. Oh, fuck. 
Is it over? Did we do it? Did we, we do it? it? Wait, wait, wait. We did it. Oh my god, my brain. I'm feeling very the one with the side less demonic. The one with the third floor is angry, man. He hit me. Oh, he hit me Dude, too, he, he almost chopped my leg off. He needs stitches. I'm gonna sue this whole fucking place, man. He hit me in the gut, bro. I am kind of suffering from a lacerations. Oh, the door's open! The door's open! Get me out of here. Oh, guys! Oh, thanks for thanks for scary storytelling. Yes, make sure everyone no, votes. Make sure you guys no, vote. Thank you for it having me. That was fucking so here, so that was so much fun. Win, but... Thanks for making it fun, guys. You all made it real fun. I can't tell you how puckered I was the whole time. <laughs> Dude, that's so sick. I don't think thirty people in a house with a very aggressive ghoul is uh very puckers. Puckers. Hey, nobody died. <laughs> Are you okay? Yes, Pog. you could say it is a poggers. Pog. Could be a pog chip. I appreciate that you enjoyed it. Yeah, that shit was cook as hell, guy. Cook as hell. It's the best goddamn Christmas ever. <laughs> oh, that yes, so really fun to be in Halloween on the 4th of July. Yeah. I need to go I home and get thing back on mission. Yeah. Yes. And what the fuck are you? Are you. Yeah, I, can't I will you always it. remember the 22nd of July, 1994, to be in Night of Terror. That's... It's been alright. What do you sound sad? back on mission. What You're on a mission. Been? I need to get back this on This is the mission. second time that I have glimpsed you. What kind of mission? What if I hug you? Is that a mission? Can I hug you? You seem so can't smile. It's not nice to smile on people. Oh. Wow. I need is more cryptid research project. Gala is always watching. I didn't expect you to have the perception to stare back. <laughs> I'm I'm the race curse. You're a fuck. Just try to understand whose domain you're standing in. Whose domain is? Before you do a little party trick like yeah. that again. I do hope my little parlor trick did not sour your opinion of me. We should meet in more relaxed times. Sure, a more cordial visit sounds nice. Preferably without spooky ghosts. You have to admit, there was some talent there. Of course there was. Hmm. I have things to attend to. I'll be in contact. Yes. Get back on mission. Bits. Bits, let's go. Grog need get toilet paper. Give me the key, bitch. Whew. Get my way. Michael, don't leave. Is everybody fine? My god. I'm oh, okay. Yeah. I just got a little bit of cookie in my pants.
This place looks amazing. There we got the backpack too. Yeah. Pregnancy backpack. Yeah. Mel, I really liked your story, by the way. Thank you. You better really love me. Now, now I'm falling heads over heels, whoever that voice was. I'm gonna find that person. They love me, bro. Here you know I me, mean? simple Jason. Hey, buddy, was that you over the intercom? Oh no, I'm in love with simple Jason. It's so complicated life is. Good job, simple Jason. You know, sure, D. I really wanted to steal some of that stuff in the hotel, but I didn't. I really fought my baser instincts. You know, I'm really proud somebody of myself. Stole, somebody stole the treadmill for sure. I saw. <laughs> I wanted to steal the pizza oven. I think it worked too. Oh, god damn. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. I got the materials. Can you, uh,. Whip me up one of them fancy Gladys, the gold, the bronze Gladys. Yeah. I want lots of Riku weapons raining down from the fucking sky. It's gonna really put ourselves on hold. I am happy for the folks that got their hands on some good weapons. I'm real sad about my sales. Get that recon rig now. I'm gonna get this lady involved in my class action lawsuit. <laughs> Dude, that freaking ghost with the scythe almost one shot me. Motherfucker hit me in the head. Hurt? Oh, dude, hit me in the head, and I was almost like terminally ill. I was seeing stars, man. I started freaking on him, and he ran away. <laughs> man, uh, the ghost. They don't like the torch, so that's good to remember. You ever gonna give me my shoes back? Okay, yeah, we do gotta have an interview. I need to talk about some recent events of that a mass robbery that took place in the fucking bank. Ooh. Yeah! Posse, baby! Damn straight. Deputizing oh, myself. Cool. You bet. Saw it in a western once. So, you know, I figured I'm gonna deputize these boys. What are you gonna do with your new pack? That's a good question, you know. If my posse got to kill someone, I thought that'd be a sheriff. But man, them fuckers ran off and hid, so it's kinda lame. I still might be sheriff. I kinda like being kinda like having a posse roaming around town. You kind of have a little bit of a limp to you. 
Oh yeah, the ghost hit me in the leg too, man. The motherfucker was out for me. Ghost hit me three times. Big P, Big P. Na 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 There was someone at that had been that I almost killed. Thank you. Oh thank you, thank you. Good on you, good on you, folks. Appreciate it. Do. I'm just telling people the truth, lady. Oh damn it! I like how the story started out not aliens and then became aliens. <laughs> Yep, very complex. I think there may have been 40 or 50. I wonder if they killed anyone. A flu a few Serious flesh wounds will probably scare a lot of people. Out of character, where is the vote? I almost killed him.
For a room so small? Yeah. Neighbor. Hey. I don't hey. know about that guy. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> about that guy. That was a nice little party you threw there. It was. I yeah. think the northerners tell better stories. Absolutely. <laughs> tell a good story. Southern bastard. I'm wasting my time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. Your voice was creeping me the hell out. I mean, really sold it. <laughs> yeah. Ah. on that, um, whatchamacallit? Oh, it would feel like late. Yes. Did the big, big changes. A little minor things today. Oh yeah, I'll walk by and check it out. You all right, Jason? I right, just making sure I don't want to leave you vulnerable.
once I get done with the color scene in the theater, I'm uh, Need some help? Ah, uh, good job, Jason. You did really good.
Ooh. 